After losing over 21,000 on my Russian ETF, I have decided to sell all of my investments. I've ignited my ISA, gutted my general investment account and culled my crypto. My accounts all now stand at zero. It was a tough decision, but I think it's for the best. It's hard to say out loud, but I've decided to follow my true passion in life. Ever since visiting Chester Zoo as a kid, my heart was always drawn to the Arctic. It was from this point on that I knew this is what I was destined to do. So starting next week, I will be leaving to become the ultimate penguin trainer. April Fools! Ha 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 ha! That's about as much of an April Fool as I'll be doing, as much as I would like to talk for 10 minutes about becoming a penguin trainer. What I did want to do is take this opportunity to talk to you guys about something that's been on my mind, which actually does tie into becoming a penguin trainer, funnily enough. So I'd like to tell you about something that happened to me a couple of weeks ago that really put things into perspective for me, and made me question my investing journey so far. I'd really love to hear what you guys think about this down below, so once you've heard what happened, which honestly was very scary. I'd love to know what you guys think down below. Oh, and uh, yeah, if you could smash that like button for the cute penguin, that would be awesome. But first, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Amon. The Amon wallet is a secure and easy to use cold wallet, which has some great services and functionalities. Users can benefit from instant euro, pound, and crypto transactions. And the exchange offers 14 different digital currencies, including two stable coins. You've got Tether and USDC. Users can convert their favorite cryptocurrencies via the app instantly, and they can also earn up to 12% in passive income interest with a nifty Amon Earn account, which gives some of the best rates available in cryptocurrency. There's also no lockup period and users can withdraw anytime they want. To sign up with Amon Earn, simply download the app from the App Store or Google Play, complete the KYC process, you can transfer funds directly to your Amon wallet, and you can convert the funds to any digital currency of your choice. And then you can start earning this passive income interest with weekly deposits and you can withdraw at any time. Amon is currently in the process of seeding another round as they extend their service offerings to Europe. They're also in the process of partnering with Mastercard or Visa to launch the Amon card to Europe. But more on this in my future videos. Okay, so what happened? Last month, it was my granddad's birthday. Me and my partner popped to visit him just to see how he was and he started telling me about how his teeth were literally dropping out and he showed me one of them he had collected in a jar. And he explained to me when you get into your 80s, these are just kind of normal things that happen when your body starts to deteriorate. But he was also telling me about a family member who's in his 50s, who hasn't particularly had the best time in his life with mental health problems and addiction, who's finally managed to get his life back on track. But he's just found out that he's riddled with cancer and has around six months to live. I wasn't particularly close to this family member. I think I've probably seen him a handful of times when I was little, if ever. But this made me think, wow. Imagine being faced with that reality and having six months to live. At that moment, you pause and think, what have I done with my life? What have I accomplished and have I done everything I wanted? So this sent me on a path of thinking about where I'm at and what I've achieved. I have traveled to some extent to some amazing places through my 20s, but I wouldn't say I've really traveled or explored the world. Not saying that that's my goal, but it's definitely something I'd like to do, especially if I only had six months. Later that same day, we traveled home, did our weekly shopping as per usual, and on the way back came possibly what was one of the scariest moments of my life. My girlfriend was driving and randomly about halfway home she was struggling to breathe. And then came panic and a very scary situation. I told her to pull over and she was struggling to take a breath, trying to take deep breaths just to get through it. I took the wheel and drove us home which was luckily just around the corner. I had a look at her throat and it shrunk to about half the size as normal. At that point the worry kicked in. We called 111, that's the emergency helpline in the UK and got no real answer. So we decided we're going to have to go to A&E. We get there, we complete some questionnaires, which in that moment isn't really what you want to be doing. And then I was told I had to wait outside due to the whole coronavirus situation. I then found myself at midnight sitting outside A&E on my own, in the car, waiting to hear what happened. I had around 14% battery, which was quickly declining. I sat there and I literally thought to myself, for all I know, it's gotten worse, she could be in there, something could go wrong, and that could literally be it. We ended up waiting for a total of five hours, we didn't get to see anyone. Luckily, it calmed down and we pretty much gave up. There was one doctor across three wards, and I mean, let's not even talk about my feelings about that with the tens of thousands I pay in tax every year. But that moment sitting there really made me realise how quickly your entire life could change. Life 
is very unpredictable and could drastically change at any given moment. Now you might think, why am I sharing this on a finance channel? Well, actually two reasons. The first is that I do share with you guys in complete transparency everything that goes on in my life. The second is that it really made me think about my investing goals and now you can see how this ties into the title. This year I'll be turning 33, I've saved £20,000 pretty much every year for the past 10 years. I've invested to build up my ISA, my lifetime ISA and now I'm at the point where I'm looking at opening a SIP. Which don't get me wrong is great but what I've really realised lately is life is finite. We aren't going to live forever and we need to start thinking like we have 6 months. If we want to go travel the world or go to the Arctic to become a penguin trainer we should. Now, I can see the flip side of this argument that the sooner you can stop working the better, but I think it's very important to enjoy the journey. I recently watched a video which really touched me. A man interviewed a passerby and he asked, how old are your parents and how often do you see them? He replied, they're 70 and I visit them twice a year. He said, well, given that they live to average age, say 76, you think you've got six years with them but actually you're only going to see them 12 more times. And that is a very good way to look at your life, to cherish the moments you have with the people around you and maximize your interactions at every moment. To put down your phone and live in the moment, to travel to that city or to get out and visit that place you've always wanted. My current investment goals look like a pension at 57, which in reality will be 60 by the time they bump it up again, a lifetime ISA at 60, and my ISA I'll use perhaps around the same age, hopefully a little before. And it makes you think, well, that's great, but am I going to limit my life until age 60? When I'll have more money, then I'll know what to do with and not really need it. At this stage in my life, I want to buy a house, travel, maybe have a nice new Tesla. At 60, I'll likely have paid off my house, perhaps I'll still want the car and travel, but I'll look back and think, why didn't I do more of this sooner? My relative won't even make it to this age, and there's no guarantee that I will either. Over the next few months, it's really time for me to come up with a long-term plan, look at what my options are, and reevaluate my goals. As much as I love the concept of financial independence and retiring early, it's not like I'm on some 200k a year salary and going to hit it in five years. We've recently just been discussing whether we just live in a smaller house, spend more time together. Does us paying a £1,200 plus mortgage a month for the next 30 years really equal more happiness so I really need to think about the life I want to live and I'm doing some serious planning at the moment about where I want to be and I'm doing some serious planning at the moment about where I want to be and I'll share that with you guys which will hopefully help you to do the same thing. If you're still here thank you for taking the time to watch this and I'd like to leave you with this. If you had six months what would you want to do? and what's stopping you from doing it now. And be sure to check out this other video because I think you will find it super useful. Thanks for watching.